Lovable just made editing your app's design way easier. With their new visual edits feature, you can now directly modify any element you see on screen, which means you don't have to send five to 10 prompts just to change a font color or just to add a little bit of padding anymore. I'm gonna first show you how to use this feature and then we'll build an end-to-end -end demo where you'll see in action where it might make more sense and more importantly, save the most time to actually use it in production. If that sounds like a plan, let's dive right in. When you first log into Lovable, you won't see any tangible differences right away, but we'll send our first request and then I'll show you the new button that pops up. So let's create today an app that allows you to enter a workflow and basically breaks it up into different components to tell you how you should automate it, what components are automatable, and we'll use a different large language model. We won't use OpenAI, we won't use Anthropic, we'll use Grok, which is a super fast LLM that produces very quickly. You'll hopefully notice that using something like Grok makes the user experience that much more fruitful, especially when you can click a button and within literal seconds you get any response. So this is the prompt I put together and I didn't write it fully myself to be frank, I used my lovable prompt helper, custom GPT, that you'll get access to in the Gumroad link in the description below, along with some more goodies on the way. If we read through the prompt, it says, I wanna build an app where users can enter a process into a beautiful responsive search bar. Upon clicking, the interface dynamically expands into sections generated by an LLM, and then I go through what's generated. So we want one section that summarizes the process that I just entered. Another that says which parts of that process might be viable for automation. Another one might be prioritization. So once you know what the opportunities are, what are the order of priority of those opportunities? And then the last one is a full automation plan where it creates a mini roadmap end to end. In terms of look and feel, I said modern and minimalistic UI with smooth animations, dynamic scrolling, again, responsive search bar, card based layout and dark mode with soft gradients. So we'll send this and we'll see what we get. So this is the result and it actually looks pretty nice. Now I imagine it won't do much when I say something. So I basically make a lot of YouTube videos, then I manually write descriptions. I'm just gonna copy this to the clipboard. Okay, so when I click enter, it basically comes up with this process summary, this automation opportunities, prioritization, and implementation plan. So let's use the visual edit feature, which is right here. You can see now, instead of just selecting an element and saying select, it now says edit. So when you click on this, I can now hover over which specific div or component I wanna edit. So in this case, I could say input, I wanna make this a different color. So let's make it a uh, gray inside. Let's make something a little bit prettier. Let's do zinc. Okay, let's do something a bit darker. Okay, let's do that color. So now, instead of me worrying about prompting it, telling it which exact component and going back and forth, I can directly control what's happening. Now, there is an even lazier way to do this that I'll show you in the next couple minutes. And if we go to the right hand side, this controls the actual size of it from a heights perspective. So if I crank this down, you'll see it gets way smaller. If I go up, right? You can directly control by every single parameter how large it is very specifically. So when I click on save here, it'll actually send these changes in without writing a single prompt. And if you want to go even lazier than this, I can totally show you that. And I will show you that in the next few minutes. And it instantly applies what we did on screen. And you can see here at the very bottom, you can see visual edit it in lovable. And then you can see it took 28 seconds. And then you can do another edit. So let's go to the overviews here, which are these little buttons, and let's make them a different font size. So let's make them body, okay? So they're a bit larger now. And then we could make them different colors, right? And Or you can select a specific one, right? But let's click save for now. We'll apply that and we can keep going. And then obviously I can go now on the header and now we can make this font size like 6L we can change the color if we want, if we wanna make it something a bit more flashy or subtle. So let's try, let's try something more flamboyant. Let's try like a, a deep green. Okay, let's go there. And obviously I could enter a hex code here if I wanted to. So one cool tip I'll give you is if you wanna play around with what colors might look nice with each other, I like to use this site called coolers.co and basically how coolers works is if you click on start the generator, you can click on your space bar multiple times to find different colors that go together. Then if you like a palette, then you can actually lock in 
certain colors keep going until you have the palette you want. But for now, let's take this as an example and take this little hex code here and we'll go into visual edits and we'll click on paste. Okay. And we'll click on save. And then this also will get applied right away. And you can see how hands off this process is. And if you want to stop using the visual edit function, all you have to do is go back to edit here, unclick it. And now you're going back to potentially changing the functionality of the application. Now, if you remember, my goal was to integrate Grok, which is a very fast, large language model into this app. So first I'm going to show you what Grok looks like if you've never seen it before, and then we'll implement it. And I'll show you a little trick I use now to implement custom scripts into Lovable. So if you go into console.grok.com slash playground, you'll be able to send a sample message to different large language models like DeepSeek, like Llama and like Quinn. So if we take something like Llama, let's take a larger model. Let's take this 70B versatile. You'll see how unbelievably quick this is. Write me an entire essay about books. Okay. Once I click submit, I'm not going to speed this up. You'll see it in real time. Oh, let me click submit and you'll see it's literally drafting it immediately. Super fast. Now to implement this in lovable, I did something a bit different this time. So I used O3 mini high with deep research and I asked the question, Hey, can you read through all of the documents of how to use the Grok API and then figure out a way to come up with some boilerplate code where I can run a request. In this case, we get something like this, where it takes a simple request, like explain the importance of fast language models. And then you get some output like this. And all we care about for the purposes of our application is this content portion where you get the response. And you can see here all the metadata about how quickly it ran, the number of tokens it took, etc. But we don't care about any of that, just the content part. So how do we go from this function here to bringing it all the way into Lovable? Well, we're going to have to set up a super base instance to be able to use the edge functions as our bridge to integrate this function. So I'll just copy this to the clipboard. And what I did beforehand is I set up a new super base called automation buddy that I've already authenticated here in lovable. So you can see here we connected it and now we're good to go. So now we can start building things from a function standpoint. So typically this is the part where now I paste the script and try to fight with lovable to try to integrate it without it changing anything or shifting things behind the scenes that I have to keep clicking, try to fix over and over again. But to try and prevent that, I'm going to go over here and click on chat only. I want to first set the tone for what I'm trying to do, implement it and even have it play back to me what it thinks it understands before we implement the functionality. This helps level set with lovables underlying LLM, what my plan is and what it has to do. So I've already prepared a prompt here and I'll paste it right here and read it with you. I want to implement a function that will execute and generate all the sections after the user enters their process and will generate it all using something you haven't heard of called Grok. Now here, I like to say you haven't heard of it for a reason, because if the LLM thinks it has knowledge, it might try to be proactive and integrate it in the way it remembers, which typically is not very helpful. So in this case, I say, I want you to implement the following script verbatim. Don't use your own knowledge and follow it blindly. Ask me for my Grok API key and then implement it in the edge function. So now that I send this, so I send that request first without the script, just so it asks me for my API key. And here I'm just going to add it. I'm going to paste it here, click submit, and then I'm going to give it the actual script. I'm going to copy paste this here and then go into the chat section and say, here is the script that I want you to follow and implement verbatim. Okay. And then I'm going to paste it here and I know it's still actually uh, outputting. Now that it's done running, we see here it has added the Grok API. Now, one thing that immediately pops out to me is it says uses the mixture model for analysis. So that's not good. I want to make sure it's following my lead, which is why we're doing this in chat and not doing this elsewhere. So I'm going to say, I need you to implement the following script verbatim and not use Mixtral. We are using Grok, which follows this implementation. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to go into here and then paste the actual code. I'll say, this is the typical output. 
we just care to show the content portion of the output in our app. Okay, so I'll also give it a quick preview of what the output looks like. So we'll copy paste this here. And then I'm going to say at the very, very bottom, play back to me what you understand based on my request. Create a roadmap implementation draft. Okay, so now I'm going to give it the opportunity to tell me what the plan is. So you'll see how valuable this is. Right here, the output says, currently they're using Mixtral 8, 7B, whatever. What we wanted is obviously this Llama 3.3. So immediately, without me going back and forth and wondering what's going wrong, what's breaking, I know right away what's happening. So now I have more confidence that we're good to implement this. So I'm going to say implement plan. And you know what? I'll actually click on this button, implement the plan. And let's see what we get here. Now that you click on implement plan, it goes back to default chat mode. So just be aware of that in case you want to keep going in chat mode later. But once it finished implementing, we didn't actually receive any errors with how to call the Grok API. It did follow my plan verbatim. Where we did have some errors was on the parsing. So if you check the actual edge function history, you'll see that we were able to make the content call to Grok and we got all of this back. It just wasn't aware of how to parse it out and bring it back to the UI. So that's a normal error that I didn't write any prompts to resolve. I just clicked try to fix twice. And then now, so if now we paste this prompt here, which says I first read my emails, then I prioritize them, then I respond to them in drafts, and then I send them one by one, very manual process. I'll click on this. It'll take around three seconds to populate everything. And you'll see here, I am speeding anything up. You have read emails, prioritize emails, respond to emails. You have the automation opportunities and their priorities. A bit interesting that they're a bit out of order. I think they're descending instead of ascending. Then you have prioritization and then you have an implementation plan. So let's say here I want to change the colors of these different boxes. We can use visual edits for that. So I'll click on edit and then we'll go into these specific boxes. And then I'll show you now the lazy method that I promised before. So instead of me having to worry about a certain color, or a certain border radius, you can click on this little feature toggle here called advanced. This will show some text that to you and I isn't plain English, but this actually represents these settings. So a little hack that I came up with was I created a small GPT that understands how to translate the changes we're trying to do into this little chat here. So if I go back and I go back to edit, and let me just try this again. Let me go to edit and then these divs here. I'll go back to advanced. If you go to this lovable GPT, I'm going to write my single line string. And I basically want to write the settings based on what I see. So I'm going to scroll down and take a screenshot here. Let's do this. And then let me paste this in. And I'm going to say, I want to make this have a shadow and be a pretty vibrant color against the background. Okay, so it's just gonna translate my layman's terms English into some one line response here. And if I take this and I paste it, <clears throat> and if I take this and I paste it into Lovable, right here, you'll see what happens. They all change color. Now, is this the color that I want? Probably not. But let me just screenshot this again, and I'll be like, can we make it more of a teal? Can we make it more of a teal? And in this case, you should get an output yet again, and it's GPT-40, so it'll be super quick. I'll just copy this, paste it back here, and I don't even have to worry about the settings. And if I click Save, we now have a new and improved version without me even having to click on the buttons individually and test things out. Now we could definitely keep improving things and making this green go with this teal and change the background, but hopefully you get the idea of how you can use visual edits to save you tons of prompting and tons of nitpicky back and forths by just being able to click on edit, click on any single element, and then being able to advance that element and make it look better and sleeker. Now, if you want access to the two custom GPTs, which is the prompt helper, and the second one, which is the visual editor one-liner, those will be available for you in the description below. 
And I'll also throw in the code for Grok should you want to actually implement it into your own apps because based on what you saw, you can see how beautiful and blazing fast an experience it is. So it might take your lovable experience that uses Gen AI to the next level. If you found this helpful, let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, like, sub, and I'll see you next time.